Okay, we have 7.29. We are reconvened in open session following our closed session meeting. Yes. We have a motion and a second to approve all administrative contract renewals as presented. Any other discussion or questions? If none, all in favor, show a right hand. All opposed, like sign. Carry the seven zero. Thank you. Next item: considering if approved, appropriate approved job classification. Dr. Hudson. I uh, just as the uh, operation license daycare known as PELE at a discounted rate for the children. Just wise, infant school district their employees. During the licensure procedure, new requirements and regulations for compliance have to be implemented and executed. Uh, professional staff members' duties and responsibility have, has increased, have increased tremendously, uh, which you have a copy of those, uh, the job description. At this time, the administration recommends the board trustees approve the new job classification for the position as recommended by task. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the job classification as presented. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Dr. K. Mack, second by Mr. Stephen Martinez. Any discussion? If none, all in favor show a right hand. All opposed, like sign. There are none. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Our next item will be to consider and, if appropriate, approve the instructional materials allotment and text certification for 1919 2020. Ms. Williams? Okay. Annually, districts are required to certify to the State Board of Education and the Commissioner that for each student in the required curriculum, students have access to the instructional materials that cover all of the Texas essential knowledge and skills. The superintendent, local school boards, and the board secretary are required to sign the instructional materials allotment, known as IMA, form before it can be accepted by the Texas Education Agency. The administration recommends that the Board of Trustees approve and certify the instructional materials allotment form as presented. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the instructional materials allotment and text certification as presented. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we second. have a second? Do we have a motion by Mr. Duran, second by Ms. Martindale. Any discussion? If none, all in favor, show a right hand. All opposed, like sign, there are none. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> next item will be to consider to approve the state adoption of instruction and materials for Proclamation 2019. Ms. Williams? The review and adoption process determines the instructional materials eligible for adoption by the State Board of Education, SBOE. The process starts with the SBOE revising and adopting new Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills and is complete with the selection and implementation of new material by school districts. The SBOE creates an adoption cycle for subjects in the Foundation curriculum. At this time, English and Spanish language arts and reading with writing is under Proclamation 2019. The SBOE uses Proclamation to call for new instructional materials. Once the proclamation is issued, interested publishers submit a statement of intent to bid. The state review panel members review instructional materials to determine the extent to which the TEAs are covered and to identify factual errors. The Commissioner of Education reports the percentage of TEAs covered in each product as determined by the state review panels. To be eligible for adoption, instructional materials must meet at least 50% of the TEAs. In Jasper, we began the review process in November with an instructional material selection committee of teachers from each campus from kindergarten through eighth grade. The committee met several times to review policy and review various instructional materials. Learning List facilitated our meetings and developed a rubric for meeting the instructional needs in our district. All textbook reviews were set up on each campus for all ELAR teachers to review all products and all ELAR teachers were provided the rubric for input and scoring. Information was reviewed from the rubric with the committee and a roundtable discussion was held. The 
Instructional Material Selection Committee recommends the following adoption for Proclamation 2019. Kindergarten through third grade, McGraw Hill, ELAR and SLAR. Fourth and fifth grade, also McGraw Hill. Sixth through eighth, McGraw Hill. Kindergarten, Benson, Vertical, Handwriting. First grade, Benson, Slant, Handwriting. And second and third, Benson, Cursive, Handwriting as a flow to the curriculum. School districts and open enrollment charter schools place their orders with TEA through the Educational Materials Online System known as EMAT. This statewide electronic instructional materials management tool processes Texas public education instructional materials, orders, payments, and deliveries of adopted materials. The administration recommends that the Board of Trustees approve the adoption of ELAR, SLAR, and handwriting materials as presented. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the state adoption of instructional, instructional materials as presented. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Martindale, a second by Mr. Whale. Any discussion? <coughs> if none, all in favor of the motion show a right hand. All opposed, life sign, there are none. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Next will be to consider an appropriate approved contracting for ground service. Mr. Silo. In accordance with uh, district policy CH local, any single budgeted purchase of goods or services that cost $50,000 or more shall require board approval. Uh, to improve our everyday appearance of the JISD grounds, we are wanting to contract the grounds maintenance to an outside contractor. Um, we received four RFPs um, during the video period. Plant lawn services for $175,000 uh, for 39 cuts. Landscape specialists for $179,300 for 39 cuts. Uh, superior lawn maintenance, $197,800 for 39 cuts. Uh, corporate bands, lawn and irrigation services, $172,308.12 for 37 cuts. Um, which went up to 181,621.95 for the 39 cuts. Um, selection committee met on 4-5, um, 2019, and went over all RFPs. Criteria was based on price, reputation, stability, past experience, and the ability to complete jobs with a quality, with quality in a timely manner. The committee consisted of John Seibold, um, Ronnie Bryan, and Crystal Jocelyn. The committee individually scored each RFP based on the set criteria and then completed and compiled all scores. Uh, the unanimous top score by the, all committee members was Platte Lawn Service with um, 293 out of a possible 300 points. Um, recommendation, administrator, administration recommends approving contracting for ground service for Platte Lawn Service for the remainder of the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Um, and the 2019-2020 fiscal year based on our selection criteria and following policy CH local and CBB legal for sealed proposals. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the contracting uh, for ground services and award that contract to play on service. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. <coughs> second. We have a motion by Ms. Stewart, a second by Mr. Well, any discussion? Uh, as soon as possible. It'll probably take a couple of weeks um, to get it going. We'll probably have uh, council look at the contract. I know that the uh, last meeting was pulled the price from, I think it was the April. Yeah, I, put, I kind of loosely did a, a new sheet. I took the three weeks that we lost out, and it, was, it comes up to 79 months. August 31st, the remaining year. That's just rough on how many, when they can start. Is that uh, 79140, would that be taken out of the, uh, the maintenance budget? Yes. So no Existing budget, yes. We didn't do a um, budget amendment. <coughs> Who is that corporal man? It's from Jasper. So this will be subject to legal review of the contract? Yes. It's the, the RFP was legally reviewed. Now we want to uh, get with them. Okay. Any other discussion? If none, all in favor of the recommendation, show a right hand. All opposed, like sign. There are none. Motion carries 7-0. Next 
next will be to consider and, if appropriate, approve accepting a donation of charter buses, Mr. Sabo. In accordance with CDC local, board must approve donations with a value greater than greater than $2,500. Any gift that is conditional <coughs> upon use um, for specific purpose or a gift of real property. Um, Miss Crystal Jocelyn um, was notified by Mr. Larry Halsey, and he's willing to donate three charter buses to Jasper Independent School District. Buses are 97, 98, and 2000 Provost Charter Bus. Um, I had Ms. Adams and Mr. Kevin Cherry travel to Dallas over spring break and, and look at the condition of the buses. Um, they think they're in good quality um, and would be a benefit to the district. Um, recommendation is approval of the donation of the three charter buses from Larry Causey, pending proof of a clear title. We've got to do a little work on the title since they're just coming to the property. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the acceptance of a donation of charter buses pending title purity. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. We have a motion by Ms. Stewart, a second? Second. Second by Mr. Webb. Any discussion? If none, all in favor of the recommendation show the right hand. All opposed, like sign. There are none. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Our last action item will be to consider and if approve, appropriate, approve grant from Aspen Institute Forum of Community Solutions and Budget Amendment 19 10. In Ms. Horton's absence, Dr. Hudson. On the board policy, BAA legal, the board may receive requests saying that donations or other monies or funds come legally into the hands of the name of the district. The district will be receiving a grant from the Aspen Institute for Solutions to assist the consultation fees, salary assistance, travel, and planning expenses for those who are working on the capacity building and school zone, for those that have the higher education technology and the job to re engage, disengage youth in ages. 16 to 24 for Jasper County, Tyler County, and Newton County areas. We anticipate donation is 50,000 for research planning and development of youth opportunities, which include GED, high school completion, and good credit program. The grant period is from April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020. Uh, grant will be accounted for in 199 funds, general funds, which will require an amendment to the current 1819 budget for the first at this time, I recommend, the administration recommends approval of the Aspen Institute grant and budget amendment number 1910 to report the additional revenue and appropriation for the grant. We have a recommendation from administration to approve the Aspen Institute grant and for the budget amendment number 19-10. Do we have a motion? We have a motion by Dr. Kamek, second. Second. Second by Mr. Webb. Any discussion? Can I ask a question, please? Yes, ma'am. I'm listening to the, the, so the grant is over in March of 2020. If they are in the middle of courses for the spring semester, what happens to April and May? That, that is not necessary for the program. That is to set up some additional things to do in the <coughs> case. So that is <coughs> key is taking dual credit courses. Okay. And that, those I two heard you mention so dual credit. And it's it's to re-engage when they talk about the disengaged youth opportunity. You'll just look for the 16 to 24 that are not in school or not working. Okay. And so the grant is looking to develop a program so we can re-engage the disengaged youth. So that's what it will be a focus on. Okay. Not necessarily, it, it doesn't affect the dual credit at all. Is this, uh, is this in coordination with the TLL Foundation yes. grant? Yes, well, it's, it's totally okay. separate, but you know, TLL, uh, Temple Foundation also deal with Opportunity Youth, and this Aspen Institute is another organization that they have partnered with that they wanted us to be partners with as well. So with those two grants, we got to come down that? But they're not combined, they're totally two different focuses. Because I know on the other one, and I, I mean, I'm fine with the other one, pay the salary of the two 
Yes. And then this one, uh, the state there, and it says, you know, uh, the compensation fees, salary assistance, travel and planning. So is that two different people? Other no, this may be just it? one individual person that we may have on staff to, to really to help re-engage the 19 to 24. That, that would be someone's responsibility to locate and try to get those kids back into uh, so we can get completion and also help them in their situation. So there will be a JSD employee? Yeah, possibly, yes. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve the Aspen Institute grant and to amend the budget item number 19-10. No other discussion. All in favor of the recommendation, show a right hand. All opposed, like sign. There are none. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. That concludes our business and our action items. Uh, our next item will be um, announcements and reports. Uh, as board president, all I'm going to say is this time we are required to report on the current status of board members in regard to our annual training requirements. <coughs> Uh, and we are all required to receive specific board training each year. The following board members, myself, Mr. Martinez, Ms. Stewart, Ms. Martindale, Mr. Webb, Dr. Kennack, and Mr. Duran have all met our annual requirements for board training. And had we not, we would have until May 4th to complete those requirements, but we're all up to the storm. With that, Superintendent's report, Dr. Hudson. I just go tech. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, <laughs> we heard you going back from that MOU on that. Any legal? Yes. Um, the, um, and I can send it, but um, Mr. Young might be able to be both of them as well when we get signed off on Our next uh, report will be a campus report from Jasper Junior High, Mr. Burt. Good evening. Uh, I'm here to do a campus report on Jasper Junior High. Uh, same cover page I use in the front. Okay, uh, we we'll talked to you all today about PLCs and data. Uh, PLCs have been a work in progress. It's been a growing and learning experience through trial and area era. We have found a good rhythm for working the protocols for developing formative assessments and then collecting data and analyzing the data that comes from the assessments. The teachers are really seeing the value of the data so they can spiral back to reteach standards that students may not have performed well on. Teachers have also noticed that how the use of formative assessments are related to the increasing in, uh, Achieve 3000 Lexile scores and the growth in our math data. Okay, if y'all can look at this picture, the upper left there, that's our data wall in our PLC room. And like I said, it's been a growing process for us. Uh, we didn't realize from the beginning that there could possibly end up being 600 points on some of these, um, these graphs. And so I've, I've learned a little bit. Uh, I've gone over and looked at how uh, Mr. Davis has done it. He's had a year ahead of us on working this. And the way he represents his is a much, efficient, much more efficient way. And so going into next year, we will represent our data in a, in a much more efficient and more meaningful way. It'll look a little bit different than that. Uh, the upper right-hand corner is our, um, our calendar for the year. It's a calendar that we put up and we mark everything on how we do it for the year. Uh, above that, uh, in the center, are the campus goals that align with the, uh, the goals that y'all set for the district. And now on either side of that are the core courses, the ELA, uh, social studies, math, and science. Uh, each department was also a task with setting goals that would help the uh, campus meet their goals, which in turn helps the, the uh, district meet their goals. And the bottom left is uh, the actual district goals that y'all y'all set uh, for us last year. And that big bell, you might be wondering what that is. That bell is in our PLC room. And as, uh, you know, through our map data, our in, uh, NWEA, when they take the, what's called their BOI, uh, the beginning of the year test, then it sets a growth measure of where they should be at the end of the year. Well, the bell is there, so whenever the students reach their growth, even whether it's at the MOI or at the end of the year, the teachers do a little celebration by giving them the printed out gift to the students in the class. Well, the bell is for the teachers themselves to celebrate. So they're in their PLC and they go through their data and 
that the more if we had some that met it, and at the end of the year, we'll have some more. Each teacher will go up and say the name of the student who met the growth, and they'll ring the bell. And it gets kind of loud in that front hallway, but we don't have a lot of classes there. And the, the office staff gets kind of excited to hear the, uh, the bells going off. Uh, the teachers kind of got a little excited about ringing the bells, worried about the screws holding in there for a while. All right, who we are. JJHS is a strong instructional staff who collectively created our JJH, JJHS nine negotiables. They include our culture, our professionalism, our instruction uh, expectations, what we expect instructionally. And if you'll look at some of these pictures, this is just some uh, pictures we have taken uh, in our PLC room. There's some of our ELA teachers working on creating assessments. Uh, uh, Miss Alvis, who is fairly non-conventional, sitting on a bouncy ball, and sometimes she sits down while she's working on her, uh, her elbow on the wall. Uh, she works there and kind of bounces around. Um, other pictures, uh, we still have our uh, Teacher of the Month, uh, Passing of the Cape that happens. Uh, uh, the biggest picture there in the middle is whenever the, uh, the different departments are actually uh, coming up with their goals for their department. Okay, Mr. Pinto. All right. The second thing we have to talk about is AVID. We are a, a campus-wide AVID campus, which means we practice AVID strategies in all classes, not just in our AVID elective classes. For this, must, we must continually go to AVID workshops and bring back useful information for the rest of the staff. <coughs> this spring, I have attended two such workshops. The first one, I took teachers, and the second one, I took Ms. Jocelyn and Ms. Ernest. Both of these trips are to a junior high in Channelview that is a national demo campus. The first trip was to showcase campus-wide strategies, and the second was for ELL strategies. Uh, we will also go to the AVID Summer Institute in Dallas this summer. Uh, just a couple of pictures here. The one on the left is when we were, I took the teachers down to Channelview. The one on the right is an actual field trip that uh, the AVID elective classes uh, went to about oh, three, four weeks ago after a, uh, Boykin Springs, they did a five mile uh, nature trail hike. Uh, now when we go to these um, these workshops, and especially the Summer Institute, each teacher goes into a um, particular strand where they learn strategies for a particular purpose, and then when we come back, I have those teachers actually do some of our uh, professional development uh, the first couple of weeks before school starts. We'll set up an actual rotation where they'll have us a particular topic that they teach, and then the rest of the staff rotates around. So when they go to all of these workshops and this summer institute that we get sent to, uh, they come back and then give it to the rest of the staff so that we can use it and see it in the rest of our classrooms. All right, campus life. Uh, not only do we still do the, uh, the passing of the cake, which is just basically a uh, uh, whenever the teacher that receives teacher of the month, and she is the one that must choose the next teacher of the month. Uh, but also at the upper left hand, I have what's called a high five award when I find an employee, uh, <coughs> teacher, whoever, uh, a professional that's kind of going over, above and beyond, then I kind of go to them and I recognize them. Some just, it's just a little small trophy with five fingers on it.